Welcome to Event Radio, covering local drag racing, stock car racing, motorcycles, go-karts. If it's got wheels and you can race it, you'll hear about it here. Event Radio is Motorsports Radio on steroids. Now, let's join your hosts, Spivy Williams and Terrible Tea Guy. Hi guys, welcome to the next edition of Event Radio. We are bringing you a very special show from a very special place. Right Uh, here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This has been about, we are at the opening ceremonies of the National Corvette Museum Motorsports Park. And it's been about, oh, several years in the making. And, and, uh, you know, we're getting there. It's, I, I tell you what. It's absolutely an amazing place from what we have seen so far. There is, I don't know, there's enough paving here for for an interstate. I mean, it's got an unbelievable amount. We parked all the way in the far end of the parking area. They say they're going to hold uh, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood, there's going to be rather somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 Corvettes here. And, and honest to goodness, I believe this place will hold 10,000. Yeah, it's close to 10,000 here now. So it, it is. I mean, they're still rolling. It, oh, listen, it is absolutely the biggest. an awesome, awesome venue. The, there is all kinds of folks here. We're going to attend the opening ceremony. They're about five or seven minutes away, and we're going to attend that and, and hear all of the folks and see what they got to say. And uh, we're, we're going to spend quite a bit of time here today here and, and introduce you to all the people that we think are, are pretty doggone cool that have a lot to do with this uh, venue that's coming to town and, and going to bring a ton of people. Done uh, has. Look yeah, at this crowd. already has. Huge crowd. A lot of people. Uh, there's, there's manufacturers. There's... The guys from Corvette Racing that actually race all through Europe, everywhere, they are here. Uh, they, man, there's just tons. The Clydesdale horses. Yeah, they have the Clydesdales here. There, there is just, man, it's unreal, the amount of stuff. One of that, our sponsors, Holly Carburetor. Yeah, big Holly, a big sponsor here. They have actually uh, uh, committed to build the timing tower and, and all of that stuff that's going to go on. But, but there is a ton of stuff, guys, for us to... To bring to you that you can actually see and uh, find all about and and create some interest. Uh, Another venue for when you visit Bowling Green, another reason to come uh, to to see everybody and and, uh, to see everything that's going on. This is going to be a big weekend, T-Bone. I tell you, it done is, Spivy. I mean, just thinking of all the, you are talking about the track and everything, all the venues that's going to come here just to use that track, from right. motorcycles to sports cars. I mean, it, it's going to be awesome. Well, we're going to find out a lot about it. We know that, that during the construction, there were, special, uh, there were special turns built into this that actually duplicate some European racetracks and, and Le Mans and some others that uh, to where the the i think it was sort of let's play good for our the home team to where the corvette racing guys would have a great place to practice you yeah, know the, uh, the museum was trying to duplicate the uh, motocross tracks by the Senko was <laughs> yeah yeah they were going to try that on the inside but uh hey you know they did take our our suggestion they are actually selling some dirt out of that thing well yeah and, and we are the ones that actually came up with that so uh pretty good deal pretty good where deal. our cut's gonna be <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I would say we don't need to make the bank deposit and take, you know, slip out anytime soon, you know. But this is going to be a great day. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we just saw Mitch, the head man, go by, and we're going to get to talk to him. It's going to be a few minutes before we get him because he's going to be rather busy. But uh, we're, go- we're going to sneak up here and, and where we can hear everything and, and see all that's going on and, and get right in the middle of it. 
We have the Michelin Man. We have, boy, there's just all kinds of cool people here. And uh, I, I don't know. Does, the, does the, I don't know that the Michelin Man talks. Does the Michelin Man talk? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Does the Michelin Man talk? We we don't know. He doesn't talk. Well, he he could. I guess Can he could sign? double. Huh? Yeah. Can he do sign? No. Well, he he could probably double off for Penn and Teller in case Teller gets sick. Well, they can use a Michelin man, and he'll be able to do it. Guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to get out of here. And as soon as the opening ceremonies are over, we're going to introduce you to a bunch of folks that are uh, were very instrumental in making this happen. Uh, a lot of people, our buddy Mitch that just happens to be our neighbor, and, and I, <laughs> I'm going to kid him. You know, he probably thinks he's had a two-and-a-half-mile baby. As much time yeah. as much time as he has spent here and everything that he has done to make this thing a success. He is the man, the grand poopa uh, of the Corvette Motorsports Park. And, uh, man, we get to we get to hang right in there, you I'm know, and meet a lot of these people. Here comes the Budweiser Clydesdales down the track. I mean, how cool is it to have this place right here yeah, in our backyard? Yeah. I mean, man, it is so cool. And a huge crowd, T. There's a oh, lot of people here. And everything up right now. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people motor. here. We're going to get to talk to some of the ladies from Michelin in a few minutes. Uh, get, uh, you know, T and I always search out the pretty girls, so we it's easy for us to do. But we're uh, going to take a little quick break for our sponsors and let them recognized and, and try to figure out why the Michelin man doesn't talk. You know, we don't know, but we want to find out why he doesn't talk. But uh, we're going to join you real quick, guys. Hang in there. You're on Event Radio, and we will be right back. See ya. All right, guys, we are back, and we have the the head man in charge, I guess is the, the proper way to put it. The the Honorable Mayor of Bowling Green, Mr. Bruce Wilkerson, how are you, sir? Doing fine, Mr. Williams, thank Mr. you. Mr., I don't owe you any money. I paid my taxes and everything. <laughs> Nobody calls me Mr. What? How, how about the Motorsports Park? I'm telling you what, I've never seen a crowd like this out here. It's, uh, it's just unbelievable all they've put together to make this event great. But looking at the track, this is going to be long term. We're going to we're going to be a, a a really big, even more so than before, a really big uh, motorsports place. Well, everything Bowling Green has turned into pretty much a car town. There are so many car events that go on uh, that that bring in a lot of money now to to the economy of Bowling Green. They do. It's a, it's almost an every Friday night thing for a cruise in here somewhere. Of course, you're involved in a lot of those things. And oh, we're involved in a lot, buddy. <laughs> but, uh, we, I mean, just, you know, Holly's been here forever. Now we're, since 1980, we've been the Corvette City USA. It's just it's just a great, great time to be a, a resident of Bowling Green. Not a bad time to be mayor, is it? No, sir. Not at all. <laughs> there you go. Well, we, hey, I tell you what, we're, we want to be one to tell you that we think you're doing a pretty good job. We'd sort of like you to stay there a while well, if you don't. I mean, unless you want to run off and go to Florida and lay back or whatever you want to do. But uh, we appreciate everything that, that the city does to promote uh, uh, all of the stuff that goes on here because it just it, that's a help for everybody. It's instant result money. It is, and it's and it's clean money, clean energy money. Well, so they come in here. It's it's not a factory, even though we bring in as many manufacturing jobs as we can. But it's good, uh, just fun. This, this you know, fun this this is fun. There. Yeah, <laughs> and and I've always argued, and and I get in a lot of trouble with our buddies at the Chamber of Commerce. But the the Tourist Commission brings in instant result money. They don't have to give away the farm to get it. No, sir. And and uh, what will this? What will just this weekend? We're talking ten thousand Corvettes in this city. That's fuel. That's food. That's uh, uh, everything. Hotels. That's everything that get benefit of that. All because you guys were smart enough to say, "Yeah, let's put that in here." Well, I wish I could. I could take credit for it. There's people. Go ahead. Nobody will know. (laughs) (laughs) When it when it comes election time, go ahead and tell them. It'll be all right. If I can't say this, you know, Wendell Strode's been uh, the uh, director at the Corvette Museum for I don't know, fifteen years, I guess has really turned this thing into a national treasure and I, I just really want to appreciate and thank mr strode and the board of the corvette museum for what they've done for this community well i think that they want to thank you too for the city being as progressive as it is and not being old stick in the mud saying all oh, race cars are bad they're bad because you guys can see you don't have tunnel vision you can see the results you can see the the impact you can see the good that comes out of it and and I personally want to thank you for that. Uh, 
I've been involved in it a long, long time. That's and for sure. and uh, since we started this little radio deal, it goes all over the world. So we get to introduce you to. Uh, unfortunately, we're introducing you to about three million people that can't vote for you. That's all but, right. <laughs> but but there's a lot of them that listen to it that can. They can so, come here and spend money. Though. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. They can come here and spend money. That's yeah. not a problem. Guys, we'll cut you loose, Bruce. We know you're busy, but the the mayor of Bowling Green and our friend and a uh, honest to goodness, guys, one of the only politicians that we know that is not lying when his lips are moving. Uh, he actually tells the <laughs> you're truth. Not talking to the right people. Yeah, maybe. well, uh, no, I'm just talking to the ones that that that, uh, uh, that those people that say that are the ones that evidently you didn't agree with what they wanted to do. You know. But but I think, you know, I'm tickled to live in Bowling Green. I'm tickled that uh, you guys do the excellent job that you do and, and that you have the foresight to see things like this coming to, coming to pass, you know. Well, Great. I wish I could say I was creative enough to think of this, but I am creative enough to recognize a good idea when I see it. So well, I you get, it, early, you get so. it done. That's all yeah. that matters. Okay, guys, we're on Event Radio. Our, our buddy, the mayor, Mr. Bruce Wilkerson, the mayor of Bowling Green, we appreciate you for joining us for a few minutes. You're in high demand here, so get out and go. We're going to let you run off. But uh, thank you so much for thank being you, on Steve. Event Radio. Appreciate it. Guys, we're going to take a break. We will be right back. All right, guys, we are back, and we have the best-looking lady in, of the Michelin organization with us. I tell you what, you sort of make the Michelin man look like a dork. <laughs> no offense. What is your name, ma'am? I am. Uh, my name is Sylvia Mamoni, and I am uh, responsible for Michelin Motorsports for North America. Well, you got a pretty good title. That's, that sounds like that ought to be. Yeah, it sounds like that ought to be a fun job. It is. It is a. It's one of the best jobs at Michelin, but you can't tell anyone because they'll take it away from me. Oh, surely not. No, nah, they they got to look good like you before they can get that job. You know, because the public looks at you too. See. They, well, I have competition. You know, we have the Michelin Man here, so yeah, he's, you know, he's and, more and, popular than I am today. Well, you know, we we said that in our opening statement. We understand that he doesn't talk. Why doesn't he talk? Um, Are you afraid of what he's going to say or no, what? No, no, he's very <laughs> he's very well behaved. Uh, you know, he's he's over a hundred years old. He's uh, actually we're celebrating Michelin is celebrating 125 years this year, um, and he doesn't he doesn't talk because we couldn't actually figure out what language he would speak. Because he's a global mascot. Yeah, he is. And, he is. And so what language would he speak? So well, I don't easier, know. It's easier for us to keep that mystery, keep a little bit of that mystery. Yeah, yeah. We sort of said that, you know, I guess in Penn and Teller, if Teller ever got tired, he could fill in, could he? <laughs> we, we, uh, busy person. Yeah, we, we've actually, uh, us being Event Radio, we've used your product for about 50 years. And, Thank and you. it's Thank excellent. You. And, and we understand totally uh, why the Corvette has selected you to be the tire on the car i mean they built a pretty fair car and and it just like all race cars all the horsepower in the world doesn't make any difference you can't get it to the ground you know that is the the tires are the most vital part on it well the tires are are your only four contact patches that keep you on the ground well so you know we we make sure that we work closely with corvette to make sure that we provide them a product that they're going to be able to and when tommy hits that gas pedal or Jan Magnuson hits the gas, you know, that that's directly transferred to the tire, and, and we give them the best performance we can. You know, th- there are a lot of people that watch boater sports, and they have no idea how important the tires are to all of them, all venues of mm-hmm. motorsports. Four not wheels, just two wheels. Yeah, not just Corvette racing and, and the road courses. But, but the tires are the uh, deciding factor, if you will. Uh, if, if that were not true... Uh, you wouldn't see it be played so important in all of your NASCAR events. You know, a good set of tires can win the race, period. And and when you equip your vehicle with really good stuff, sort of peace of mind there, you know? I think so. I think, I think one of our jobs is always to provide a product that enables the driver to gain more confidence and to really extract the best performance from their car. If we're able to do that, then we've done our job. We often say... We often say at Michelin, when I, when I talk to car corrals, with the Corvette car corrals at the USCC races, it's like we race to learn and then we race to win. And if we're able to learn while we're at the track, while we're working with all our partners, that knowledge comes back to our research and development centers. And then we put that in our new, in our new consumer tires, our new high-performance tires. So you're getting a little bit of that engineering, that great race engineering. That's being transferred back to your, to your product, and that gives people... That, and that makes a better product. Exactly. If 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 the guys that abuse it, as far as it can be abused, if it lives there, 
uh, your grocery getter is not a problem. You're, it's going to eliminate a lot. That's what I said. It eliminates a lot of problems. And right. the racers, uh, the racers have always been the guinea pigs, you know, to well, do that stuff. Well, it's because you've got extreme circumstances. I mean, you're, you're. I mean, if we look at a ten race. Um, this year's 10 race or 11 year race schedule. I mean, we'll race in the rain. We race when it's hot, like today here in Bowling Green. We will race um, at night, like we do in Daytona or in Sebring. We will race for 10 hours at Road Atlanta in a few weeks. I mean, all these extreme, you know, weather conditions, track conditions. We learn. We learn how the tire behaves. Well, and, and that's what you have to do mm-hmm. because I, I don't think there is a company big enough without the racers to. Uh, field that many cars to start with and and do that much tire testing and and uh, you guys are smart to to do what you do i I think it's cool and and on behalf of us at event radio because we go to every kind of motorsport event there is we want to thank you for for being a sponsor at the new motorsports park uh cool place we we enjoy it you know Uh, we're so honored we we started this discussion um with wendell probably about a year ago at monterey historics last year and it sounded so exciting. Uh, we did a trip up here in the early spring, and we were we were we we bit the bug. We had a bug bite. We were like, we're in. We got to find a way to be part of this, and we diligently worked. And the team at Michelin um, was so supportive of this of this partnership, and we got it. We got it done, as they say in, in the south. We got her done. Yeah, wait, and Larry the Cable done. Guy, right? Get yeah, her done. Get her there done. We got her go. done. Yeah, and, there you go. Um, and today, look at it today. Today we. You know, we're so happy we can make the connection with fans, with with these Corvette owners, with the cars that come out um, out of the Bowling Green plant right here next door. I mean, it's just it's just a really good circle. It's like the yeah, circle's been yeah. completed. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk to we're gonna figure out if they can change the oil in our electric golf cart here in a minute. The yeah, guys from got, Mobile yeah. One, we're gonna we're gonna get to talk to for a second. But but a, a, as far as Michelin, that. There is no better. I mean, you got people that say mine are as good as this, mine are as this. Uh, like I said, we have used that for 50 years. And, and I've had, well, I've had 31 Corvettes myself So and, and several other cars. i got an SL Benz right now with them on there. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just a staple for me. Whatever I buy, I don't care what kind of tire it's got on it. I take it and I buy Michelins and put on it because it's, it's a sense, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's the best thing to have. I thank mean, it's you. just the best there is well, out thank there. Thank you for buying Michelin. First of all, it's it's. If they weren't good. It's very I would. rewarding to hear that you've you know you're putting your you're putting the best tires for your cars on your well, cars. Well, I mean, and, it, you know, and we appreciate it, that. We're not really radio people. We're old ex professional racers, and we we have learned mm-hmm. you do what works, mm-hmm. and and when you have something, it, it's sort of the old adage: if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, we've had that relationship with Michelin for over fifty years. On, on not necessarily our race cars, but on all of our street vehicles. Motorcycles. And motorcycles and everything, yeah. And and you guys are just the, the class of the field. And I'm not trying to blow your balloon up here, but, but that's just the way it is. And and a few things can say that, and, and you're one of the companies that can. Thank you. We appreciate that. And it's it, it goes back to, you know, a company that has such a breadth in products and such an, uh, a great partnership with, with teams and manufacturers, but also the people, the people at Michelin. They're passionate. They they love the company. We have a lot of people who've been with the company for more, you know, for more sure. than who have gold badges at the at the at our offices because they love what they do, and, and that shows, and that shows in in our partnerships and the decisions we make and the products that we put out there. So there's a great there's a great energy at Michelin to, to always provide the best. Well, we welcome you to Bowling Green. We're used to having Thank pretty you. girls around Thank here, so you. we appreciate you joining us. Uh, we hope everything you will find hospitable enough that makes you want to come all the time. Uh, but but we appreciate we appreciate you being here to do the opening ceremonies of the National Corvette Museum Motorsports Park, Yay. which is uh, going to be a fun deal for everybody. It's going to be great. We're we're looking we're looking forward to when we can come back and and really take advantage of the of the place and kind of see grow and see how it, it develops and how it shines and how it it's becomes part of not only of the community but of the motorsports community as well there you go guys the one and only the lady from michelin and and if if the michelin man ever talks she's promised to bring him to us where we can hear we what he's got to say if he, ever, if he talks at the moment i think he's busy 
Uh, he's trying picture. to ride. I thought he was yeah. trying to ride a Clydesdale a minute ago, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, he saw the horses. He's uh, he's a big fan. He's a big fan. But uh, I think today, uh, being what 90, 93 degrees, he's probably got all the degrees, handle, huh? He is. Um, he's probably trying to find some shade right now. There you go. So we guys, gonna get, are we going to get Dave from? Uh, we're going to get Dave. We're going to talk to this Dave. gentleman right here because he's got a little influence over here. He's he can get us out of trouble. Oh, here we go. So we appreciate it, lady. Thank, Thank, you. You, so much. Thank you so much, guys. If you got to buy tires, buy Michelin tires. They support you and uh, you sort of got to help out for the people that support you you're on event radio we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back all right guys we are back and we're back at our personal favorite spot at the whole national corvette museum motorsports park we are at the holly trailer one of our sponsors on event radio and we got our buddy here what's your name my name is tom tom are you having fun? I'm always having fun. That's good. You know, we, we like that about you guys at Holly because you fit right in with us because we get actually down and dirty ugly sometimes and have, if there's such a thing as a fun police, they're after us. And so we really appreciate you all. My pleasure. Uh, uh, Holly stepped up at this venue. You guys are going to build the tower and, and the whole deal. That's cool. You excited? I'm always excited. We're really you're always having fun. You're always, always excited. What is this? It's a beautiful thing. Now, Holly is really excited and and proud and pleased to be a part of this organization and to be the sponsor for the control tower. Uh, really couldn't be happier, especially with this complex being in our hometown. Yeah, y'all are home folk. You know that's yep. that's the deal. It uh, uh, you know something you need to do. We we have a suggestion for Holly when you come to the events out here. Something that's going to make you a big hit. Are you ready? Let's hear it. A big bucket of sweet tea to tell these people what it's like in the South. The problem with that is we wouldn't get no work done. We'd be too busy drinking that sweet tea. No, I didn't tea. say put any shine in it now. I said just plain sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't, need to, you don't need to doctor it like the real Southerners do, you know. But some of these guys from up north, they don't even know what sweet tea is. I feel sorry for them. Well, you know, they're, they're getting better because they've come down here. They're coming to your booth. They're looking at all the good stuff you make. And, uh... uh do the Corvette guys do they do they wear y'all out on on stepping them up a little or what? Not too bad. Not too bad. You already got a Corvette. How much you have to step it up? Well, I know, but you guys can make them better. That we can. You know, with all the trick stuff you make. You know, we say, uh, of course, at the end of every every show that we do, and you may have not heard it, but we don't ever end a show but without thanking our sponsors and and our tagline, pretty much for when we thank Holly, is if if you can't find something. In that that Holly makes for your hot rod or your project or whatever, you don't have a hot rod. Because you guys, the carburetors and the EFIs are just a very small part of the Holly family. Correct. We've got a broad spectrum product line from Holly carburetors, which of course our heritage of Corvette goes back to some of the most powerful naturally aspirated Corvettes in history with the six packs and some of the high performance double pumper and applications that were utilized. Yeah, now. I had a 66 427 big block car, single four big block car held the NHRA National A Sport record for a year. Congratulations. I know all about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so we've got nitrous oxide systems, Earl's performance plumbing, hooker headers and exhaust, float tech, our fuel injection conversion line. We're also doing a lot with the LS applications for late model and early model conversion parts. And you guys put on another event here at, that's really cool called the LS Fest. Yes, sir. That's next weekend. And we're so we're fired up. You know, Terry and I go do events everywhere, all over, all over every kind of event there is, every kind of motorsports. But the LS Fest, we have so much fun at, and and we really feel guilty about doing a show there because we're having more fun than we are working. You There's know, something there for everybody between the drag racing, the show and shine, the engine swap challenge. There's drifting, autocross. There's something for everybody. Yeah, and, and, and it's such a cool event. And you band is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It is. Early registration this year was twice what it was at the same time frame last year. So wow. we're really excited about it and for the turnout we're going to have. Yeah, we're, we're going to get after it too, buddy. We're going to get out there early and stay late. How about that? Can't wait to see you there. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there. We might we might get you in there and rescue you again like we did a few minutes ago. You might never do know. that. See, do we, do we get hazardous duty pay or something when you come over and all these people or, or anything like that? Or you just uh, sort of kick back having fun? We don't get paid for this. You kidding? No, I, we, I, well, work, I figured, we, work, we work these events just to have the experience and, and the, the camaraderie exposure. with the people. I, that's exactly what I thought. I just didn't want to be the one to say it. You know, I didn't want to be the one to say it. Guys, let me tell you something. If you're at an event, not only the Corvette events, but any event that you see the Holly Guys trailer, 
uh, and, and you have a question, a problem, uh, anything that you want to know about what they make, the cool part about it is you can go up to any guy or gal that is working that trailer at that event and I don't care what you got, they can answer it. They can give you the answer you need. If anybody has any questions, please come by. We'll also have a couple seminars throughout this weekend with regard to our Holly EFI offerings and other products. And how to drink sweet tea. Answers. And how, how to, to drink. drink sweet tea. Yeah, okay. We'll come set through one if you bring the sweet tea. That'll work. All right, guys. Guys, our good buddies at Holly, we're going to let them get out of here. they got a line starting. Uh, are you all giving autographs or are you talking? What's the deal here? You know, as big as the line is, you must, you got, is Stitcher singing in there again or what, you know? Uh, We're just popular, I guess. I guess you are. Guys, the good guys at Holly, make sure you stop and see them. They are a one cool company, and like we always say, if they don't have something for your hot rod, you ain't got a hot rod. This is Event Radio, guys. We're going to stab and steer, see what else we can get into at the National Corvette Motorsports Park. Don't go anywhere. We appreciate you being with us. All right, guys, we are back uh, from the Corvette Motorsports Park, and we have the head man from Mobile One, the uh, probably the best oil in the world. There you go. There you go. Am I, am, was that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. Now, First synthetic oil ever, 1974. Now, I want to know something, and you can be, you can be honest with your old fat buddy here, okay? <laughs> you said you guys sponsored the Sphere. At the, the Spire. Museum. The Spire. Yes. Right, I'll get it right. The Mobile they, One Spire. They say that it's a tail light. they got a million different things. But now what I really want to know, we know about the hole. Yes. Are you guys secretly drilling for oil there or what? Yeah, we're, we're trying to go as far below that without <laughs> letting that, that spire come down. So far, all we hit is water and dirt. But well, that's we'll what you got to do for you yeah. find the oil, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, no, it's something else. It, it's amazing <laughs> that thing is still standing, and the weight of that thing and it's only got about 30% of the foundation below it. You know, it, it's a shame that happened, but, but it has been a huge economic impact for the, for the museum. It's a, it's, a new, uh, it's a new site, right? Yeah, really? Yeah, from, from down below, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and by the way, we, we have to pat ourselves on the back because uh, uh, probably two weeks after that, they said, oh, what are we going to do? I said, hey, boys, you're not thinking. Yeah, you got take the dirt, take the dirt, put it in a box, sell it for twenty bucks a box. There you go. And they just started doing that this weekend, go. and you, and we we get to be the cat daddy of that. You, what do you, you think? Know, do you know we um, we do an award with the Corvette Racing Team every year, and uh, we take pictures from one of the big races, the twenty four hour Le Mans, and you know whichever it happens to be, we pick a big event, we get a photograph, they win the championship, and uh, we take the oil out of the out of the car. And That's Roger, good. my friend Roger here, does an analysis on the oil. I can check it out find out the conditions of the oil. We make sure everything is running good. But we save the oil, and we put little drops of oil inside a picture frame, yeah. and we give it to the drivers and Doug and a lot of the team guys, and uh, they absolutely love it. It's the most cherished thing they get. And oftentimes, well, cool. oftentimes we'll, we'll auction that thing off, yeah, a drop yeah. of oil, used oil, and you won't believe the people that want to want to bid on a, a drop. Oh, of yeah, oil. I do. Because they, listen, there are people that that their collections are the strangest things. That's right. Uh, now, now we're convinced because we we do a lot of reading and stuff on on motorsports, and we know a lot about motorsports. But we're just about convinced that your Corvette's going to blow up if it doesn't have Mobile One in it. <laughs> uh, you know, because of everywhere you read, the everybody that has a Corvette, well, I changed mine with Mobile One. Da 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 da. You know, and and and. You guys are a staple when it comes to the Corvette culture, if you will, yeah, uh, on big part the oil that you use. You got to use it from from the from the factory cars that you buy for for the street to the race cars. Uh, we've been part of mo- part of Corvette for many many years. I, I don't think you want to run a car without oil in it, but uh, I I have seen conditions where the oil gets uh, a lot of it gets drained out and they're leaking oil, and the the car will still that run. must have been one of ours. Things. You think? One of our uh, our our beater, what, what we call the, <laughs> our suburban has been a, has been awarded the tow truck driver car of the year. Ah, okay. <laughs> you know, so no, we're just playing. We're just playing. We no, actually we've been, we've been a big part of Corvette for many years. I, as I said, uh, I think it's more than twenty one years. We've been yeah. in some sort of relationship with GM and some sort of relationship with Corvette from the factories to the race teams and now the motorsports park. It's uh, it's a pleasure. You have well, fan- it, fantastic people who love their cars. They're passionate about everything that goes into their car, including their oil. Well, they they are for sure loyal to Mobile One, and and rightly so because we've been playing with you. But you guys built make an absolutely first. 
class product. And and when you invest that much money, you look. Some of these new Corvettes are, are nudging the hundred grand ticket. That's right. And and uh, you don't put Jimmy Joe Jump Shots uh, dinosaur blend in there to take care of a hundred thousand dollar car. That's exactly right. You got to so put something the cost in there. Of the oil is really really small. Irrelevant. Can, yeah. Very yeah. irrelevant. Yeah. So we we do we try to make the best product. It's actually a goal of ours to make the absolute best product on the market. Every time we come up with a new formulation, we we check with our our OEM partners, we check with our racing teams, and we absolutely try to make the best product that's available on the marketplace. Well, I believe you do, my friend. I honestly believe you do. We Thank we you. play and kid and Not go on with four you. Four wheels, but two wheels. Yeah, also. motorcycles. Too. Bar- yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys do that. Uh, we want to thank you for for joining up with You're the welcome. with the motorsports park and making it a hit. It, uh, uh, you know, you you guys give it credibility beyond belief because you are the class of the field. And when you get the class of the field, you don't go around with any junk. You you are associate yourself with the class of the field. That's right. We and we try to be partners with the the best out there. And Corvette is actually. Uh, you know, one of the best race teams out there, but uh, we have have uh, been that partner with with Corvette because you know people can't see our product, but right. they can see the car, and uh, their passion is the car and everything connected to it. So they put Michelin tires on there and Holly Performance products and Mobile One, and, and that's 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 the passion you see in the customer and in the Corvette owner. Oh, now is it true you guys are going to oil up the Michelin Man and see how far you can slide down <laughs> through it <laughs> on the skid pad? Is there now is that a we, rumor? Or is that uh, no, we we decided we're going to get a hill and okay. we're going to get one of those big sheets of plastic and we're going to we're going to send them down and see what happens i figured you'd hook him behind the clydesdale and send him for a lap or two you know i don't know listen my friend thank you so you're much welcome. for being you're on welcome. event radio we appreciate it we appreciate you being in bowling green we appreciate you supporting the uh, national corps vet museum motorsports park and we appreciate you building the first class product that you have and and for not cutting corners and taking care of all the people that spend all the money on these cars because thank you. thank you're the you. one that keeps it alive my thank friend. you we're happy to do it all righty guys you're on event radio don't go anywhere we will be right back all right guys we are back from the motorsports park and and we've got a, a, a new company that's new to us which is not you're, that's a pretty good act in itself because we're pretty familiar. We do a lot of motorsports events, but LG Motorsports, and I noticed, man, you guys make headers for the new Corvette and all that stuff. What is your name, sir? My name is Lou Gelati, and the company is LG Motorsports, and I'm a 40-year newcomer. I've been racing since 1971, and we actually have one of my race cars in the Corvette Museum. That's good. That's great. So so, you, so you're one of those bi-directional guys that does the road race stuff, right? Yes, sir. Oh, cool. Uh, Motorsports Park's exciting, huh? This is a really, really uh, fantastic racetrack. I'm surprised they were able to get it done in one year. Well, you know, Wendell is the... Uh, you know, Jesse James did come from this area, you know, yeah. and I think that he took a, a lesson from him on how to do it legally as far as getting money. Because he seems to be able to attract a lot of dollars, yes. and, and that's what it takes. You know uh, you know that from being an old racer. Cubic yeah. inches, or cubic dollars outrun cubic inches every day. It, yeah. <laughs> sure so, so in order, I, I presume, to, to fulfill the passion, the race passion, that's where LG Motorsports came from, huh? Yeah, we've been, we've been racing uh, Corvettes since 88. I started in other cars. I was actually mini Indy racer way back in the 70s, but we've... Uh, we probably built, I don't know, 20 different Corvette race cars, and uh, there's a lot of them are still racing. And, um, you know, we've, we we three-time national champion. I won Long Beach Grand Prix, won the Dallas Grand Prix twice. Uh, Long Beach, I won it in a Corvette. Uh, the Dallas Grand Prix, I won twice in a Camaro. So we've been racing a long time. We are the Corvette that's in the museum is the only Corvette uh, that ever out-qualified the factory Corvettes. And... Uh, we ran it in the American Le Mans and GT2 in uh, 19, I'm sorry, 2009. Isn't it cool when you kick their butt? You know, Isn't that I, neat? That was, I'm telling you, it was excellent uh, to be able to take the car down there um, on Dunlop tires, and we out qualified the, the Michelin Shad Corvette factory car with 100. They had a $100 million budget. We had a uh, $50,000 budget, but. So that hey. was one time that cubic dollars didn't outrun cubic. Well, dollars. you know that that statement earlier is true, 
unless you're a very good innovative racer that knows how to spend the money he has. See, a lot of guys get great big sponsorship, and they just throw the money in all directions, and they think, you know, well, one of them will land. You know what I mean? And and the guys that are innovators, that are the true champions, you don't need all that. No, you know, and I, I tell my guys, I said, we've been racing for 40 years. I said, I've learned how to stretch a nickel into a quarter and race on a dime and leave 15 cents change. And have enough to go through the McDonald's drive through when you're done, right? Just, just barely. Yeah, there you go. Tell us a little more about LG Motorsports. Tell us, What all are you into here? For well, me? LG Motorsports, it started where customers wanted to buy the things that we built for the race cars. And and it grew out of that. And now we, we're, we are a, probably a worldwide company. We, uh, we sell nationwide. We sell overseas in Europe. And uh, we build anything for a Corvette and a Camaro. Engine parts, uh, suspension parts. Suspension is our forte. We do coilover shocks. We do uh, exhaust headers. Any anything um, for a Corvette and a Camaro. And uh, if you're going to go fast in a Corvette, you really need our parts. If you're going to go to a track day, um, and we've been doing this for years now, and uh, we've grown into a monstrous company more than more than I ever dreamed. And and you know, you don't just wake up in the morning and say, "I think I'm going to do this for a living." It just sort of happened. Yeah, it's sort of a thing you got to build your way into. Guys, one thing for sure, and, and, and we're not radio people. We're old racers, so we know exactly where you came from. And it's a whole lot more important when you're searching out stuff for your cars to buy stuff that was form- or that was figured out in the pit area and not the boardroom. You know, the boardroom comes up with a lot of parts that all they do is add to their bottom line. They don't really help you at all. And, and I think you're sort of different. Well, if... Um in addition to all the road race cars we built, we actually built 18 IMCA modified cars, uh, Diamond D race cars. That was a okay. part of our company also. I'm so, familiar with that. I remember that. I'm an old guy. I remember that. Diamond D, Diamond Dave. Yeah. Diamond Dave Seeger was the uh, guy that started it, and uh, we took him in, and we started building them in our shop, and we did 18 IMCA cars with Dave. And uh, now Dave works for a NASCAR uh, team, and, uh, but, you know, if you if you broaden your mind and you race a different series, I did some NASCAR truck racing. I did a couple Bush races, but that does take cubic dollars. And um, but you you see what all these other cars do, and now you bring all that technology to what we do for Corvettes, and, and we do some things so different than a lot of people, and it works. Well, we were we were fortunate. We did a uh, uh, we did a boat race last weekend, and we met a gentleman that builds all the motors for Menard and for Andretti. And he actually has a drag boat with an Indy Aurora turbocharged motor in it. And he goes through there with that thing turning 14,000 RPMs, you know. And the rest of these people are sitting there with their mouth open. But you talk about it, and you would have loved that because he was an engineering wizard, you know. And we have some pictures on our on our show for that. But uh, uh, we appreciate you coming to the Motorsports Park Grand Opening. We appreciate you taking a minute to be on event radio and and you sell all over the world and we go all over the world we might ought to stop me have lunch together somewhere <laughs> you think <laughs> well, we're based out of plano texas right outside of dallas and wonder uh, where it is we've got uh, got our new uh, facility we have uh, two chassis dynos a four-wheel drive and a two-wheel drive and um, we do it all for corvettes and camaros well i tell you what buddy there's there's nothing wrong with building a hot rod. And then that, uh, when you take something that's as finely put together and as finely engineered as the Corvettes are, and then you put it in a man's hand that's a racer, that knows, uh, you know, guys, I hate to be hard, but just because you buy a guitar, it doesn't make you Eric Clapton. You need to get with a gentleman like this that knows how to make it walk the walk and, and knows how to tell you where to spend your money. Don't just throw it at it. Buy the stuff that uh, from people that have used it that know what it does, and and sir, I believe you do that. Yeah, we did. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Hey, we appreciate it, guys. We're going to stab and steer in this old golf cart and get out here and ride around. We promise we won't run over anything or do anything bad. But you're on Event Radio. Don't go anywhere. Hang in there with us. We'll be right back. All right, guys. We are back from the National Corvette Museum Motorsports Park. And we're doing something that is really unusual for us because we have faces for radio, but we actually have a TV show on here with us, uh, the, the Car Guys Show. That's easy to remember. I can do that. The yeah, Car Guys Show, you, and you're you out are, of Texas. Yeah, that's right, and you are a car guy. So hey, we just, are car guys. We, we're we big-time car guys. We try to keep it simple. Hey, uh, we uh, are simple. <laughs> now, wait a minute. we got to clear up something. Do they have sweet tea in Texas? 
Yes, they do. All right, good. You're okay then. You know, we normally sort of shy away from people too far north that don't know what sweet tea is. Right. So we're, we're, we like southern stuff. And Texas is cool. Well, matter of fact, you guys have signs that say drive friendly. Yes, we do. That's cool. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. And, well, we also have Does it signs. work? Well, <laughs> you know, remember, we also have signs that say don't mess with Texas. We understand that, too. And and, yeah. uh, and all my exes live in Texas. Is that it? <laughs> and, uh, I can hear the I, music behind me. Yeah, right there you go, it. buddy. We, we, we don't sing. And we're, believe me, you've done a miracle to get us on TV. But we appreciate <laughs> you doing that. Uh, you guys do a lot of stuff, huh? Uh, yeah, we are a weekly uh, television program in Dallas, Texas, The Car Guy Show. Uh, we air three times a week, as a matter of fact. Really? And uh, we cover all the Car Guy events uh, in right now, presently in the Dallas, uh, well, Texas area. Uh, we go to all the car shows. We meet up with car clubs. Uh, we also have some neat features like Garage Mahal, That's where cool. we go into a, a uh, guy's uh, garage and, and see I mean they're spectacular the garages that we really they are well see that's the if it's like my house that's the only place in the house that your wife will let you do your thing you know right, right. everywhere else in the house or it is in my house it is that uh, nah that doesn't need to be there nah that shouldn't be over but in the garage I say Susie hit the bricks go on out I'm doing it my way that's right some may call that the man cave well but, uh, at my house I, of course being an old pro drag racer I call it my wall of fame right, you know right, that's right. What, it's in my garage there you go <laughs> we have fun you know it uh, uh, I, I think that that all the new shows and, and with you guys coming all the way from Texas to do the National Corvette Motorsports Park. That already says that it's going to be a big time hit. Well, I hope so. We, uh, you know, we certainly are having a great time doing it. You know, car guys all over—they all have the same passion. We can have a gentleman that has a multi-million-dollar company with his Corvette right next to him is a 17-year-old kid that his has his first Corvette, and we can all talk about our passion. We can there all talk go. about the same thing. There you go. Uh, so it, it's really wonderful, all the, the guys that we run into. Well, you know, I, I guess I've been fortunate because I've been part of the Corvette hobby since I was 16, and I'm an old guy. Uh, had had a bunch of them. And, and it's, uh, although I always converted mine to race cars, you know, I mean, I, I figured out they were good and fast and a little bit of work, they'll go a little bit faster, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, always been a big, huge fan of Corvettes. And, and now, with them being built here in my hometown, uh, that's just icing on the cake for me. That's oh, like th- this really is Corvette Central of the nation. This is yeah, Corvette, Corvette City, Corvette. USA. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, you I, I, I see on the internet all the time. You know, I watch some guys in some of the Corvette sites, and they say, "Oh, I saw one of these, or I saw one of these." Guys, we see them by truckloads every day of the world, you know. But that's cool. That's a cool right. thing. Well, and you have the museum right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you been over there? Oh, uh, yes. Earlier this morning. And uh, it is probably one of my, now, one of my favorite museums that I've seen yeah, across the country. Yeah, it's deep. Have you ever been to the Gartlett's Museum? Yes. Oh, Don's cool. We had him on here. And we spent two minutes talking on uh, uh, racing. Of course, I've known Don a lot, a lot of years. And and we spent two minutes talking on racing and about twenty minutes talking about UFOs because he's a he's a full time believer in that. <laughs> yeah. But but he's a nice guy and a very very smart man, very smart man. Now I'll tell you a couple of couple of cool things about the museum that they may not have told you. Okay. Well, you know, as you go in and the and the Duntoff statue that's there. Right, right. Are you aware that while Miss Duntoff was alive, they had to change his clothes every week? Is that right? That's a fact. Well, and I didn't notice what he was wearing today when we were up there at the museum. Well, I think they pretty much leave it standard. But but we we actually, one of the very first shows we did on event radio, we actually got with Miss Debbie at the museum, and we took a private tour, a, a, a trash tour, I guess you would say, you know, all the fun stuff. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things she told us. She said they were actually required, they took the clothes off of him, sent them to the dry cleaners, and swapped them out. Because she wanted to make sure his representation was as good as it could be. Mm-hmm. And and that's pretty cool, really, if you think about it. Yeah, that they would go to that length to satisfy her. Or to well, the, the, the beauty part about Wendell and all the people involved with the National Corvette Museum and now the Motorsports Park is they are very, very fan-friendly. They, uh, they appreciate all of the people. 
that are so much into this hobby, and they appreciate all the support that they give to everything they do. And, and that's pretty – just like you guys coming all the way from Texas to come cover this. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a cool deal, buddy. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. Well, and also it's really something that the museum that now they have this additional – this track. Yeah. That is just uh, just a beautiful track. I'm looking forward to actually getting out on it here this afternoon. Yeah, well, we we have already challenged Andy Pilgrim and those guys with Corvette racing in our golf cart. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to, and and the guys from Mobile One, they said I asked him this electric golf cart. I said, can you change your oil in it? You know, oh, right, he right. said it won't take much. And I said, okay, all right. But we have a lot of fun. Well, I, I hope someday that the Car Guy Show has a big enough budget that we can have our own golf cart that we can take through. Yeah, you got to step up to do that, but yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I, ours is a godsend because we're, we're old guys, old fat guy, and, and a war broke down motorcycle racer. So, well, we actually have to ride around good and do this, but. Uh, it's pretty handy to be able to have it portable, to be able to pull up next to people and meet guys like you mm-hmm. and have you sit down and join us on our little show. And and uh, we, we interview a lot of cool people, and you're now one of them. How about that? Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Listen, guys, if get on the deal. Check out Car Guy, the Car Guy Show. At thecarguyshow.com. Carguyshow.com. So I'm sure you can get on the Internet and check it yeah, out. Yeah, if, you're, if you don't live in the Dallas area, you can pick it up on YouTube. And on our website and watch past episodes anytime at your leisure. And you ought to go to the Dallas area, guys, because it's a fun place to visit. I uh, I actually bought a trailer from a, a lady you may have heard of by the name of Shirley Muldowney. And uh, she left me in Irving for a week. So we went everywhere in Dallas, killing time while they were bringing the trailer from California. But uh, uh, Dallas is a nice place. The people are nice, uh, uh, very friendly, very hospitable, and and you represent them very well, my friend. Well, we're very lucky that uh, in Dallas the car hobby is alive and well. The car culture there is just fantastic. The, all the different clubs that are there, uh, and they are. That's where I want to be right now. Let's jump in that Z06. We'll go get in it. Take it and take we'll go off. get in. See the thing about it, you got to let, let us give you a lesson from from uh, over over fifty years in doing this. It is always better to ask for forgiveness than permission. You you know, you just go jump in it and say, "Hey, watch this." You know, I, I know I need to keep my helmet with me at all times. Oh yeah, not a problem. To, to jump in. Listen, my friend, thank you for taking a minute or two and being on Event Radio. We really appreciate you doing that. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you bringing where we bring the sounds, you bring the sights and sounds. And and that's very important because there's a lot of folks that would love to be here that will that will watch your show. And, and you sort of make them sick that they're not here because then they get to see it. You know, right, we, right. you do a better job than us, man. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you very much again. And. And uh, allowing us to spend a little time with you. It was fun, I, I man. I enjoyed it. and I'll, I'll be following you around probably the rest of the day to see who else you're talking to. Hey, we talk to anybody who will talk to us. We're, <laughs> we're sort of fun guys. Guys, this is Event Radio. We hope you're having fun. We hope you're enjoying what we're doing. If you're not, keep it to yourself. We'll be right back. All right, guys. We are back from the Motorsports Park. And, and we ran upon a gentleman that uh, we want to introduce you to from the uh, – uh, he's a member. He's a lifetime member of the museum, which is a big deal. And he's also from the Texas area. Where in where in Texas? Uh, we're in a little town called Keller, Texas, where I'm from, and our club is uh, out of Denton, Texas. I'm familiar with that. I know where that is. Mr. Roger Davis. Roger, we appreciate you being uh, uh, in Bowling Green, and I'm sure you've made lots of trips, or you wouldn't be a lifetime member of the museum. But how important is the motorsports park to you? Well, I really believe that the Motorsports uh, Park is going to be a great tribute, uh, not just to Corvettes, but also to the automobile industry as a whole. Um, They're going to take and run educational classes uh, for the uh, motorsports. They're going to do classes to help uh, teach individuals uh, not just racing, but also safety techniques, which is going to be a big part of this uh, track. Yeah, well, it's it's, a... We're excited. We do motorsports all over, everywhere. Everything with wheels we cover. And, uh, of course, we've been big Corvette fans for a lot of years. And and being based out of here, uh, it's a natural for us to, to really like them, you know. But but we appreciate the clubs. We appreciate everybody. You know, it's there's a lot of camaraderie in, in the Corvette sport that uh, the cars are cool, but the people are cooler, you know, yeah, or most of them. We try to take and promote 
the, the Corvettes because sometimes, uh, like I think in everything, uh, you have an occasional uh, bad apple that gives the bad name. To yeah, we, we sort of ran into one of those here. We're not going to say any names, but uh, they just flat refused us to be on our, our deal. And, and trust me, we've had some pretty fair folks on this little show uh, that that have liked being on here, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I really appreciate uh, you guys coming out here and uh, well we, we get to introduce we get to introduce the motorsports park and the Corvette hobby all over the world because this little show is a worldwide show and uh, you know it, it's a pleasure how many people in your club uh, we have roughly uh, 60 uh, in our club it's a North Texas uh, Corvette club as I mentioned out of Denton and uh, we are not really a racing club we're more of a touring club. Well, you're the and, you're the fun guys. You have, we, we, or, did, we have dinners and uh, we did the fun police get after you on the way up here? Or? You know, um, we kind of uh, just took our time. We obeyed the speed limits. And uh, was that I, boring or what? I, I mean, I, the Corvette I, obeying the speed limits. Give me a break. Well, you know, I I, I got to take it. Kind of say it like it is. <laughs> they might have had a camera, huh? You don't want to. You don't want to let the cat out of the bag. We we don't want to take and uh, say that we were speeding. You know, I'm sure we you, did, but we. Did. I'm we, sure uh, you weren't. Normally, Corvettes do not speed. We we understand that, and that was the reason for building the motorsports park so that they would get it out of their system, right? Well, you have the motorsports <laughs> park, and you have TMS over in uh, around the uh, north of uh, Fort Worth over there. Yeah, and yeah. they have uh, days that you can take, and no matter what kind of car you have, you can take it over there and run around the track on it. You know, you know what I found really amazing when we found out a, quite a bit about the motorsports park. They have more motorcycle booked events here than car events. That's unbelievable. I mean, and, and it may be because we're so close to Barber Motorsports in, in, in uh, Alabama. But I think that they told us they have, oh, I don't know, 20-something motorcycle road race events already booked here. And, and there's something every week now through, uh, I believe it's November. Well, that's good to know because I think uh, with you guys coming in here and getting us out on the air... That helps to take and bring uh, not only motorcycles, like you say, the track is being set up for, but also uh, maybe other uh, car well, enthusiasts. Uh, right, and, and and a lot of corporate venues. See, uh, along with this, I don't know how familiar you are, you are with this area. There is another world-class racing facility right here in I, this city. I did not know that. Uh, yes, Beach Bend International Raceway. There is one of the premier drag race facilities in the world right here, three miles that way. And... Uh, they have 17 multi-day events that attract 50, 60,000 people, and we cover all of them. They are one of our sponsors. But uh, uh, this is just pretty much icing on the cake to us here because we our, our palate stays pretty full with those guys. Uh, and, and it's just people from everywhere, from all over the world, you know. We, had, we interviewed two guys that actually shipped a Corvette from Holland to here and actually to drive it around and go through the museum. And uh, so if that's not love in your sport, what is? Well, you know, that's the camaraderie. Uh, you have uh, a group of people that are pulled together by one common uh, object, which is the Corvette. And last night my wife and I had dinner at the Corvette Museum with a couple uh, from British Columbia. Uh-huh. And uh, so we got uh, to know uh, and make a new set of friends. Well, and that's, that's, what, that's what the Corvette's all about. It really is. And we have found, of course, like everything else, like you said earlier, there's a bad apple on every tree. But, uh, you know, most everybody that we have met that, that's into the Corvette hobby have been really nice people. And, and we, grabbed you, we grabbed you off of the middle of the grounds, and, and you didn't know us, and we didn't know you. But but we appreciate you taking a couple of minutes and being on event radio and and being a lifetime member of the museum. That uh, uh, Wendell gets to call you often, right? Is that it? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, he does. we we kid him. We said, you know, there are probably very few TV evangelists that raise any less money than you do. You know. <laughs> Yes, that is true. Well, he's a nice, nice man, and he has done a fabulous job for the museum, uh, getting all the motorsports park going and, and, and all that stuff. And there couldn't be a better captain for the ship, I think, than him. Wendell has done a great job, but it, 
if you really take a look at it, it's the entire staff over there. I have oh, yeah. never, ever met anyone over there that's not willing to go out of their way to help you or to take and provide information and give you uh, guidance. Yes, they are they are absolutely wonderful to us at Event Radio. They uh, All of the things that we cover over there, they just turn it over and said, here, guys, go after it, you know, and do it. And uh, not like some of them. I don't know. We, we wanted guys to bring you the Corvette racing, but we have to have an appointment to talk to them. They will not just talk to us. So uh, uh, that's a shame because we wanted to bring that because they're we're one of the stars of this show. But I guess they want to do their talking on the track, and we're, we're just not important enough for them, and that's okay. Roger, thank you, sir, so oh. much for being on Event Radio, for taking the time, and, and for being such a great ambassador to the Corvette hobby. Hey, we try and just remember, you see a Corvette out in the road there, there's a good person behind the wheel, and we all try to drive safely and friendly. And they wave at each other, too. That's fun, too, huh? Yes, we do. All righty. Guys, you're on Event Radio. We are having just too much fun at the National Corvette Museum Road Race Park, or, or Motorsports Park, I believe is the proper name. And, and we're introducing you to some really nice folks that we appreciate being at this event and make the Corvette hobby what it is. You're on Event Radio. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back, and and we are actually with one of the most important people to us here at this event. There There are thousands of people here, and nobody that we think any more of than our buddy, Mr. Eric Ingram, one of the owners of Final Finish, one of our sponsors that actually placed faith in us when it was not warranted. We probably spent a long time not doing him any good, but he had enough faith in us to know that we would get to this point to where we were doing him some good, and now we're rocking the boat, buddy. Well, thanks for the kind words. Well, no, you earned them. Hell, we didn't do anything. You, you, you've you, been a big Corvette fan for a long time. Yep. Still are, even though you have a Brand X car. Yeah, we will not talk about that. No, yes, we will. <laughs> oh, yes, we will. <laughs> yes, we will, because... You probably would love to get, guys, the Brand X is a Porsche, uh, but you would probably. Porsche. Porsche, yes. Uh, See, I get that confused. When they tell me, I I was instructed from one of the guys at your show, your Cars and Coffee show, he said, you need to call it Porsche. I said, I thought she was married to Ellen DeGeneres. I thought that, uh, (laughs) she was in the movie's Cars, I thought. Yeah, (laughs) something like that. (laughs) Anyway, you'd probably like, you'd be happy to get a Volkswagen on this track. I know you. Well, we just, I got to go out this morning with that first group, but we didn't do any, didn't get up to speed, but we did a, we did a parade lap, so I got to go around. Are you going to get to take a hot rod out there, buddy? I might. I'm signed up for the track day on the 26th, so that's what I'm looking forward to. So you're going to, you're going to take a hot rod and go out and. And spin a tire, huh? Yeah, we're going to do it. That's Can't wait. Great. Well, I, I tell you what. Now, you would be worth us coming to watch out here because I know you know how to make one walk the walk. You and Adam Boca went to a – was it a school? Is that what it was? Or Well, he's he's done a lot more than I have. But uh, but you got a lot more talent than he's got. So well, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like T. I came off two wheels. That Well, and, and you know, I think that really helps. That, uh, it doesn't hurt. Well, well, you learn you learn where you have to be finesse. The motorcycle will taught you finesse, the and motor- that's how to go fast in a race car. A motorcycle guy has to learn how to find traction, and and how to and how to use it. Uh, yeah, because yeah. you got all the power, power yeah. to weight in any about any kind of motorcycle you got. It's yeah. not a big deal, and then to be able to transfer that to the car and and put it through there. You already know how to do the corners. You know where the lines are. You know how to love the scenery uh all of that kind of stuff right. so uh you know y- you already know how to do that stuff yeah uh the road course stuff is is probably the funnest thing i've done been lucky enough to do so far and i'm kind of just getting into it but i can see that you know being something that you can do a long time and you stay a whole lot cleaner than a dirt bike too i like that part is there a road race car in final finishes future I think so. We're looking for we're looking to do something. But, you know, I no, mean, are you going to build a track car? I guess is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, we're going to try to find something that's already done and just get into it and and, and sort of tweak kind of it a little. Level. Yeah, show them yeah. the way to. We'll really put a good paint it. job on it. Show them the way to really do it. That's right. We're well, look, you guys can good. do it all, man. You can powder coat all the stuff cool and and uh, knowing you, you know the the beauty part about you boys. And I'm going to tell you what it is. And you're a sponsor, and I should. I'm, they think I'm blowing your bubble here, and I'm not really. You know how to – you make stuff really cool looking every day. 
But then when it comes to you and Chase and old dad, right. y'all know how to make a hot rod perform, too. Right. And and a, not a lot of companies can do that. And and uh, uh, you'll take a race car that that you'll put through there absolutely flying, and it will be best of show on top of that. So, uh, you, you know, Earl's 55 that you guys did, and I keep I always talk about Earl's car because – He's got a 55 Chevrolet, guys, and you can go on some of our website and check some pictures and stuff. But this thing wins best of show just about everywhere at every cruise in he goes to, and you guys did the whole thing. Yeah, he designed it. It was it's his it's his brainchild, but we 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 made it look pretty. Well, yeah, you did a pretty doggone good job of that, buddy. Yeah. You know when you go in where there's 500 street rods. And you wind up best of show. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad for old yeah. hometown boys. For hometown, I, I agree with that. Dad's got a copo coming. That's the, that's the next big. thing. Yeah, I know. You guys dabble in everything. I'll go on it. I'm yeah. envious. You he, know, cause we, yeah, he, I am too. I'm excited about that. Wait, is he going to let you drive it? You think? I don't. I probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> he, well, he'll drive it. We went up to see it get built, and uh, we walked in the performance shop. It's just a small place, and uh, there was nobody there but us and the guys working and we got there before they opened up and they opened the door we seen them unlock the door and they kind of waved us in and and it's just one guy talking and we inter- get introduced and he's like okay we'll go see your car we open the shop door and it's he goes the first car we see it's just a shell of a camaro and it's on fire and he goes that's your car right there <laughs> So. They, but they do. They actually burn them to get weight out of them. Yeah, they were burning the se- the seam sealant and stuff. That's out right. Of it. Yeah, so it was and and fun. they actually lose some weight yep. doing that. That's what they were doing was grinding weight off of it. That's right. See, we're not totally dumb. We know a little bit. Yep, you do. They they actually get a can a uh, import or export spec car. So that car was actually uh, a car VIN numbered for Canada, and that's because they don't want the satellite radio antenna hole in the roof so that's oh, really? something else we learned yeah, yeah that's yeah, a technical okay. thing you can use 20 years from now to trick somebody about yeah, boy, i tell you what, we'll tell them all kinds of good yeah, stuff we'll, we'll say hey our buddy eric told us that <laughs> you know we we learned it was uh it, that shop was amazing and they're doing fab work in there and and uh they they were talking about you know they're proud of how how well they can build the car and and they have all the mathematics and the, and the blueprints and the drawings from gm directly so they like when we have a piece cut it fits right in the spot. We don't grind it. We don't trim it. It goes right in. Made well, a lot of sense. That program has been a pretty good hit. Uh, yep. as for all over the country, the guys that have had those. There's a, there's another guy here in town that has an orange one. Are and they racing at Indy this week? Is it uh, yes. This weekend? Yes, I they think are. there's 30 yes, or 40 of them there. Yeah, they are. They're, they're running the U.S. Nationals this week. Uh, and uh, it's unbelievable that, of course, when I grew up, the, the regular factory cars were fast. Because I grew up in the muscle car era, you right. know. And, and you could go into your local Chevy store, and you could buy a big block car, radio delete, heater delete, all those things, which was pretty much a factory-built race car right at any Chevrolet dealer. That's and neat. then they figured it out after they built all the economy bombs that, that the public really wanted that, you know. So the, the Copro thing sort of came about. And I think that's a stepping stone. I think you're going to see all the manufacturers doing that same thing pretty soon. I think it's a great concept, and it's just you know, uh, it really uh, shows that the you know what kind of a car nation we really are when they're when they're putting seven hundred horsepower uh, Hellcat Dodge Challengers on <laughs> the road, and it just keeps going. It's it's pretty amazing. Let me ask you something: one of the new hot rod Corvettes in your future? Probably, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I like you. You you don't say yes, you don't say no. Just probably. I like them. I like them all, though. To be honest with you. I like I like I'm just a car guy by heart. I, well, I like all of them. You'd have to be to to be in the business you're in and do as good as you do at it. You'd have to be a car guy at heart. Yeah, you really how cool to. is it to have this in our backyard too? I know that's the great thing, and and this this motorsports initiative that Bowling Green seems to be getting behind um, is just great. You've got this track, you've got Beach Bend, uh, you've got vendors like Holly and people like us, and and a lot of other places too. Uh, the geared for fun concept is really something that i'm i'm proud to uh be living to see happen and i, I you know and we're I just hope it comes into focus you know the way they they they're looking at well we're just i mean we thought it was christmas when we walked in the tourist commission and they handed us one of the new little visitors guides for for four, 2014 and 2015 and they had named event radio as the actual voice of all the motorsports events coming into the city 
uh, we we kept looking around. Who who in the world were they talking about? That was you know? a nice it tip was of us. the hat there, wasn't it? Wasn't too bad. Well, I guess blind hog finds an acre every once in a right. while, wouldn't you think? I'd say so. That proves we got a couple of people listening out there. You know, yep. hey, yep. we're doing good. I agree, buddy. Listen. Thank you for letting us slow you down a minute. Now you, you we, I believe we could get an audience with Obama quicker than we could you. Well, nobody wants to talk to him anyway. But, I agree with but, that. But uh, you, you stay so busy, and, and when you're as talented as you guys are and as uh, on top of your game as much as Final Finish is, you're in demand by a lot of people. Man, that's true. It, it really is. And, yeah. and we appreciate you taking a few minutes to be on Event Radio. Number you're one, welcome. we appreciate the sponsorship more than you know. And, and we appreciate the faith that you put in us, just like I said in the very beginning. At the beginning, we did we weren't doing you your money's worth. We realized that. But you had enough vision and enough faith in us to know that we would. And, and now we're there. And uh, like I say, being listed as the number one voice uh, for every car event that comes into this area. And, and nobody appreciates Final Finish any more than us. And nobody is honored to have them on our team as much as we are i appreciate that and if you guys are uh, free later we're, they're unveiling that gs90 car at 130 yeah y'all did that, that right yeah, yeah we're yeah. gonna we're gonna it's over it, at the museum yeah side. we're gonna we're gonna wind up here pretty quick and we're gonna head to the museum if, if we can find a yeah. place to park over there yeah the uh, the go dick Goldstein, he's gonna be there to, to see it they've okay. had that for a while so i, I think he's gonna you well know. you get to guys if, if if you come through the museum and take a look at this car you'll see a little of final finish handiwork and when uh not not to blow their horn too hard but when the corvette museum comes and gets you to do their stuff you might say it's a pretty good little outfit you know well, Eric, we, my we, friend. We appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you being on Event Radio. Guys, we're going to stab and steer, get out of here. No telling how much trouble we get into. Probably the fun police will be after us, but that's okay. You're on Event Radio. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. Well, guys, that's uh, that's pretty much wraps us up from the uh, National Corvette Museum road race facility that they have built, the, the Motorsports Park. This place is really, really nice. What it's an awesome track. Yeah, it's going to be really, really a cool venue to uh, be able for us to come and, and do things. Uh, a little disappointed, I guess, in Corvette Racing. I, we went to Corvette Racing and asked them to be on the show to interview that, and we were flat turned down that uh, we don't do little guys like us. So uh, we're sorry that, that your attitude got in the way. We would have loved to have had you on event radio, but believe me, we will get along without you. And because there will be a lot more people that will visit the National Corvette Museum and the National Corvette Museum Motorsports Park, that uh, you boys better get on your game because there's going to be a lot of them that will spank you right hard here. Or they possibly could name a condom after you. I mean, with the attitude you had, the little girls there it was very nice. It was the higher powers that come out and try to uh, act like a... Uh, Mohammed, maybe I'm trying to say. And well, we appreciate it. Hoss. That's a shame because uh, uh, Corvette people in general are really, really nice people, and then there just happens to be one or two that turn around and make uh, put a sour taste in your mouth, and and that's bad. That's really, really a bad thing. And and if they only knew what they were doing, they maybe, don't know. They don't want to make Spibby mad, do they? Well, no, not that. But but if they only knew. Uh, what they look like? Well, yeah, I mean the the image they portray. Uh, when you're in front of the public, guys, uh, the public it, it's sort of like an old saying: it's not what you are, but what you are perceived to be. And by having an attitude, sometimes, uh, please don't do that if you're out there, no matter what you do, because they get perception of the whole thing being that way over one person just acting a fool. And and so don't do that. Uh, out of the thousands of nice Corvette people that we have run into, and we have had the pleasure of, of meeting a bunch of them, and then you let one spoiled apple ruin the pie. And, and uh, uh, you know, I know they think they built this whole motorsports park just for them, but get a grip, boys. You're getting ready to get spanked by some big boy teams. You better go back to Europe where you think you'd do good is all I know, you know. Uh 
T Bone, I tell you what, I like this place. You're you're looking forward to running your shifter go kart on oh, it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's going to be motorcycle fun. Motorcycle races will be. Yeah, there. and and they do have guys many many more motorcycle events booked here right now than they do car events. So. Uh, and a lot of track days for a lot of manufacturers, a lot of stuff. This will be a huge asset to Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous. Mitch, which was very, he's my neighbor, and he, he was going to be on the show with us. And, and he's sort of like the guy that just delivered a two-and-a-half-mile-long baby uh, <laughs> because he has worked like a tyrant on this place. He even had us working. Yeah, we even helped move chairs and stuff. But But they're so nice. Everybody here at the facility has been nice and and welcomed us with open arms. All the people from Texas, the guys with the Car Guy TV, man out of Dallas, how, cool how, nice, how nice are they? They're great. And and uh, all the people we've had on, the Corvette clubs, the lifetime member Corvette clubs, uh, just tons of folks. The, the, the lady from Michelin explaining why the Michelin man doesn't talk. How cool is he? <laughs> and, of course, the guys from Mobile One that are going to change the oil in our golf cart, and it's electric. So, <laughs> you know, we've just had a lot of fun. Our buddy Dennis from Final Finish. Hey, no better. I said Dennis, that's a daddy. Eric, I'm sorry, Eric. No better people in the world than Final Finish. We never end a show, guys, without thanking our sponsor. They are more important to us than anybody on this planet. A lot, they're right in there with you, the listeners. But but our sponsors, Beach Bend Park and Splash Lagoon, Beach Bend Raceway. Quick Fuel, Final Finish. The Gearhead Gazette, the number one car guy magazine on our end of the world, gearheadgazette.com. And, of course, the guys that are going to be building the Taj Mahal Tower here at the <laughs> Motorsports Park, the nice guys at Holly. If you can't find something for your hot rod at Holly, you ain't got a hot rod, guys. You ain't guys. got a hot rod. You ain't got a hot rod. We've had a blast from from the National Corvette Motorsports Park. That's hard to say all yeah. one time. I'm trying to get it all together, you know, the whole nine yards. But we've had, a, we've had a blast from the Motorsports Park. As always, guys, if you enjoy what you're hearing, Please tell a friend. If not, forget where you heard it and keep it to yourself. Guys, we'll join you again. Not sure exactly where, but we appreciate you being with us. We'll see you. Thank you. You've been listening to Event Radio, covering local drag racing, stock car racing, motorcycles, go-karts, If it's got wheels and you can race it, you heard about it here. Event Radio is Motorsports Radio on steroids. Join us next time with your hosts, Spivy Williams and Terrible T-Guy.